Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's Daily Word. Today is Friday, April 30th, the last day of the month of April, and we're ready to turn the corner. So if it's true that April showers bring May flowers, then um, based on the crazy weather, we might have lots of May flowers. But anyway, it's good that you could join me this morning for our few minutes together as we end the week together and look forward to the weekend and think about what all of that holds and the plans for the weekend. Hope you'll plan to join us for worship on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll begin a course at 1015. You can join us in person in at the church, or you can join us here on Facebook Live beginning at 1015 on Sunday morning. And of course, then we'll gather again here um, for our daily word again on Monday morning, on Monday, May the 3rd. So thanks for joining me for our few minutes together this morning. So I've chosen this morning um, the scripture, and it's from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20 through 27. And, you know, Proverbs is full of wisdom um, for how we're called to live our lives and what that might mean for us. And so hear these words from these few verses from the fourth chapter of Proverbs. My child, be attentive to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them, and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, and far for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you crooked speech and devious talk, far from you. Let your eyes look directly forward, and your gaze be straight before you. Keep straight the path of your feet, and all your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the left or to the right. Turn your foot away from evil. I was thinking about this scripture um, in light of a couple of things. When I was um, working for the conference and doing um, consulting work and planning work and guiding work with congregations throughout the Ohio Conference, churches in Ohio, Northern Kentucky, and West Virginia. We, we have churches everywhere. And I was in um, all, all, a lot of churches in the Ohio Conference. I can't say every, but many, many churches in the Ohio Conference, mm -hmm. I'm doing work with them and trying to get them to think about their future. And you know, when we, when we do that kind of work, and if we're in a difficult place in our life, sometimes it's hard to look forward at all. For some congregations, when I challenged them to look forward, they couldn't see beyond the present moment of what they were going through, and so they struggled with that. And so a lot of my teaching and work with congregations in those days um, revolved around a thing that I called three weeks, three months, and three years. So plan what you could do in three weeks, plan what you could do in three months, and plan what you could do that might take three years to accomplish. Now, some congregations embrace that. Um, some people can embrace that. You know, um, when we look forward to an event in our life, so I know that there are people looking forward to weddings, whether it be a few weeks from now or or even a whole year from now. And so you know, people look forward to weddings. They talk about going on diets. They talk about getting tanned, doing all those kind of things. And, and depending on how far away it is, we think we can push those starting points a little bit farther. Um, we we plan for vacations. We plan for all kinds of events in our lives that that help us um, to look ahead, if you will. Um, but the world, you know, is full of distractions, and you know, there's so many things that demand our attention. If you drive down the highway, there are, there are all kinds of cars and billboards and signs and and things that that demand our attention. Um, you know, we we um, always have our phones out and looking at what it is that is begging for our attention. Um, every single day, even even on this social media or as we watch TV or whatever that looks like, media campaigns, political campaigns, ad campaigns, they all vie for our attention. And, you know, we often in our lives look to big moments to change our ways. We, we want to make a huge decision. There want, we want to be a turning point. But life really is about the choices we make in each and every moment. 
not just obviously the important yeah. ones and the big ones, but every single decision. Proverbs, the writer of the proverb, um, exhorts us to look ahead, to keep our eyes focused in an intentional way, to, to ha be intentional about where we look. Be attentive to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all vigilance, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from your crooked speech and devious talk. Let your eyes look directly forward and your gaze be straight before you. Keep straight the path of your feet and your ways will be sure. Do not swerve to the right or to the left. Turn your foot away from evil. The writer implores us to look ahead um, because where we look and how we look determines where we go and how it is that we, then, that we then live our lives. You know, when I worked with congregations, they were so struggling, many, many of them struggling within the moment that they could only see what was in the moment, or they could only, um, for many of them, look backwards and see where they'd been. The hard, the hard challenge to work with congregations is, was to get them to look forward at all and to gaze beyond the present moment. But when we focus on God, as the writer of Proverbs tells us, it directs our path, it guides our feet. And where we look is a decision that becomes the most difficult for us. We look ahead, we have to look for success, it has to awaken our hearts. Um, when we're in the valley, you know, we, we struggle looking ahead because there's desperation. Um, when we're on the mountaintop, we think that's successful. And when, and when we're on the plains, we, we sometimes get lulled into a sense of apathy and we forget to look ahead. But every day, the writer says to us, is an opportunity to see the kingdom of God in our midst and to focus on God's kingdom and to look ahead to what God's calling us to in the midst of all the distractions and worthless noise that then competes for our attention. And as our vision leads us, as we look ahead, and then it invites us then to daily consistent action in our lives. And you know, I think that we have found that so difficult and we're so, we're so consumed by all the things that are around us and that demand our attention that we forget what the writer of the Proverbs has to say to us, to be attentive to our words, to look forward, to look to God, to guide us, to keep straight the path of our feet, to not swerve left or to the right, but to keep straight and to look ahead. And I think, you know, we're ready to turn the calendar um, to the month of May. And that's a big challenge for us as we think about how it is that we're called to live in such a way that we look forward. Now, it's not always easy, you know, we don't always get it right and figure it out, but it is, it is indeed what God has called us to. So, um, maybe as we turn the calendar to a new month, we can refix our gaze, we can realign our paths, we can guide our feet in a new direction in the month of May. So, if that's a good word for us today as we live our lives. I pray that you'll know peace and mercy and grace in your life, um, that you'll go forward with all things, and that you'll know of God's love and know of my love for all of you. And I look forward to seeing you then on Monday morning at 10 o'clock and at worship on Sunday morning at 10.15. Have a great day.